Welcome back to news, everybody. So, turns out I go away for 10 days and absolutely everything happens, including expansion leaks. It's all quite crazy, so let's get stuck into the Warcraft news. Today's sponsor, which is New World. Their first premium expansion, Rise of the Angry Earth, is actually out today. There's a whole ton of features, and if, like me, you wanted mounts, well, good news, they're actually here. You'll need the base game to play it, and until 9 a.m. October 10th, they are doing 60% off the base game's editions, and there's a new bundle of New World and Rise of the Angry Earth for $45.98. You can click my link in the description. Now, this expansion brings a lot. It's on top of a game that's been honed over the last few years, too. They've totally revamped the story. Leveling is quite briskly paced. You can hit level 60 by just doing the main story. Almost all the zones have been revamped. The remaining original ones are getting love in future updates. And essentially what's happened here is the zone of first light has fallen to the Angry Earth, waking beast lords and ravaging the land, turning it into the Elysian world wilds. You've got customizable, diable horses, lions, and dire wolf mounts that can have custom skins as a part of this, which lets you travel the world faster. They've added in the flail as a new weapon type, and of course, along the higher level cap, there are more trade skills, recipes, reagents, artifact quality gear, new story, and all that will come with Season 3. There's actually a lot, and they've worked with content creators to make a returning player guide. So, what you should do is hit up my link down below to let them know that I sent you. With that said, let's get stuck in. We knew that Chris Matson was back, now we've heard that he's even more back, and I suppose this is also something I can be a bit uh, tastefully leaky about, because I've heard certain things. Matson now is the executive creative director on Warcraft. It's a full-time role. Ian and Holly have very recently spoke to the press about all this being very good. He's the father of Warcraft in a way, voice of Thrall, and unlike his last stint at Blizzard, well, he's working on the Warcraft franchise only. He's not having to split his time between Diablo, Starcraft, and Titan, which then turn into Overwatch. Now, basically, the whole point of this, as said by either Ian or Holly, I think it was in the same interview, is that they've pretty much ran out of Warcraft 3 stuff, and when they make new stuff, they've got to make sure it actually feels like Warcraft. So I suppose, who knows? Maybe Shadowlands was them trying to squeeze the very last drops of juice out of Warcraft 3's pulp. Now, this is where I can talk with, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, knowledge of things that I've heard on the grapevine. A bit of a TLDR, yeah, things are kind of changing in, in a bit of a direction. And I think it's in a direction that will be better. I kind of can't really say too much because things would become rather obvious, but I've just heard things in private. And um, one of the really hilarious ones that I have mentioned before, but I've since heard again, is um, some people being, uh, you know, grr, old man back angry, which... Uh, is, is really stupid if that's really the way that they're taking this. Because if we looked at the recent narrative status quo and saw that it was delivering amazing results, well, yeah, maybe we wouldn't need a new change in direction. Uh, but, um, you know, the, the narrative has been a, a bit of a hot mess. And look, Dragonfly is systemically better than when it came before, absolutely. It's got lots of great content. It's even got some great narrative bits, right? Some great stories that can happen. But, um, well, Number one, they're a little bit of a mess in terms of their macro narrative design. This is the biggest big picture. And a lot of them are kind of diverging away from the sorts of stories that maybe, you know, happened to Warcraft 3 that sort of got the franchise to where it is. Overall, then, I think it's good news. It's kind of hard having, you know, tea that I can't spill, but it is what it is. I don't think those details would serve any form of good. But the core point is there's teeth to the whole Matson situation that there is actually seemingly uh, some real change coming out of that, rather than, uh, I suppose, some people's fear, which was they were saying, all right, Boomer, come back, you'll be useful for marketing. Seems it's actually not that. Next expansion then, right, TLDR, Towley is a streamer for World of Warcraft. He's been streaming WoW for ages, since the days of Justin TV. Uh, he knows a whole bunch of uh, WoW devs IRL, and uh, he can certainly be a bit loose-lipped. Now, there is a clip. The clip is deleted, but this is the internet and things do not stay deleted. What he says is, everyone keeps talking about the South Seas expansion. I keep telling y'all, y'all are thinking too much above the sea. You guys are thinking too much above the sea. I said it two weeks ago, you're thinking water, where you should be thinking somewhere else. I mean, that's all I gotta say. 
Why did that clip get deleted then? Uh, did he fly too close to the sun? It's the sort of thing in games we uh, tend to operate like as an industry in a thing that's called a friend DA. It's not an NDA, but there's a common understanding that, uh, you know, you'll respect the confidentiality of things that you hear. Of course, I'm joking around, some wink wink nudge nudge uh, can be fine, but uh, this is a little bit more than that. It's certainly, uh, it certainly can inform us of things, and you'll see a little more why uh, in a bit. Now, what sword? I'm glad you asked, because, uh, well, he tweeted a picture of a cave, saying that it's somewhere he'd like to visit. Dude, just go to Iceland. Anyway, uh, Sol then commented, saying, the sword is bound to clap some stuff around Silithus, revealing what's below, to which Towley said, I mean... Yeah, so, um, sus. He also tweeted a, a rock, a bug, and a cobalt. All seems kind of underground. Perhaps it's all an elaborate ruse? Perhaps not, because, uh, well, Blizzard actually made a pretty damn big mistake. Heroic Edition, Algarian Storm Rider. Yeah, I just cropped up on a database along with a few other things. Loads of them are Warcraft Rumble tie-in toys. There's the uh, Yzergle the Dream Merc, which is almost certainly going to be our BlizzCon pet for this year, amongst a bunch of other promotional items. Now, Algarian. Do you remember Kaz Algar that was found in the uh, the records that we came upon when we went to Ultiman at the start of this expansion? TLDR, right? A bunch of Irvin went into a fissure after the whole Curse of Flesh thing. Um, well, uh, there was just a Dwarven society that called it Kaz Algar, which was quite interesting because um, it was called Kaz Algar, even though they'd... Uh, like, never seen or spoke to any other dwarves, meaning that this whole naming scheme thing, just, uh, and culture, I suppose, just, um, kind of developed separately, independently, in different places. Uh, of course, their land is, uh, in a fissure, so that would be underground, which is kind of what Towley spoke about. I mean, underground. Elements. Dwarves. Real-life thrall returning. A lot of things being thrown into this story blender, so expect a deep dive video very soon. Probably tomorrow. I've almost finished writing it. I just need to go and record it. Right as we heard the Mets and news, the Hearthstone team experienced some layoffs. Uh, per Blizzard, quote, organizational changes were made to the Hearthstone team, and as a result, a small number of roles have became redundant. So what's the reason we'll take here? Well, look, Hearthstone is not really making money, right? It's 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 smaller. <laughs> it's been on a, on the decline for uh, years, it appears anyway. Um, it of course had its uh, new mode fail so hard it was like removed, and that mode was a blatant attempt to um, well try to recapture the big win that was the Battlegrounds mode, but in a version that would be, uh, you know, quite a bit more monetizable. So that didn't really work out well. And they've got very desperate in their mission for monetization, right? We keep on talking about these insane little Hearthstone uh, deals and promos and uh, stupidly expensive, like, cosmetic cards that they sell. So, look, in light of this, yes, that team is getting reorganized. Um, does this mean that Hearthstone is going into maintenance mode, going the way of Heroes of the Storm? I don't know. I suppose I wouldn't be too surprised. Now, per Kotaku, this has impacted around 10 people, so it's not the most humongous uh, thing, right? Um, but uh, yeah, look, it, it is what it is. Is the game making money? Is the game losing money? What is the state of the game? It's kind of hard to tell. At least culturally, it doesn't seem like Hearthstone really um, makes a dent anymore. What do you think? Okay, Time Walking is active. It will be back to back for the next six weeks, with a special reward being there for partaking in five weeks to the max. So, Cataclysm Time Walking is active right now, then it will be the Burning Crusade, then Legion, then Mop, and finally Wrath. The level requirements for these have been reduced, by the way. You can check out this video for our uh, very big leveling guide, which is even more relevant now that it is Turbulent Timeways, but do remember, you will need to be out of the chromy time, uh, like, mode uh, to queue for Time Walking for some bizarre reason. Now, the weekly quest for Time Walking at max level will drop Heroic Raid gear, and uh, there is a buff that will stack up to 30 percent XP when you're doing um, time walking dungeons and uh, that will refresh to a three hour duration every time that you do clear a dungeon. If you max that buff five weeks in a row you will get this mount. Of 
course, time walking is already absurdly quick for leveling. This makes it even more fast. Uh, roll this buff into, say, a Dream Surge zone with the XP buff and War Mode on, and uh, yeah, you'll just be level 70 magically. Uh, you also, by the way, get 50% rep for the active expansion during these uh, time walking weeks. That means it's a great time for uh, getting loads of mounts, seeing loads of great content, checking out perhaps uh, Netherwing, Skedis, uh, Order of the Cloud Serpent from Mr. Pandaria, a whole lot to do. One of Azeroth's best holidays is back. Brewfest is up until October 6th, and defeating Corrin has got a chance of dropping this dragon riding customization. Now, you can also catch the Brewfest speeches at 6.15 a.m. and p.m. Pacific time, or 2.15 a.m. and p.m. British Standard time, and if you do that, you'll get a 10% XP buff that lasts for two hours. We've also, this is a pretty cool thing actually, got a major new source of event currencies, and that is bar tab barrels. These are found across 12 taverns in the Dragon Isles, and uh, they get you 10 tokens each. Basically, it's 120 tokens for a quick fly around the aisles, and you can do this once per character. And that actually means that in a few days, your alt army can hoover up loads of Brewfest rewards. But next, drama. Ah, wake up one day, and a great-looking item that costs 50 grand is available for only two days. That is the Pirate's Day situation for many. And now, to many players of WoW, 50 grand is absolutely nothing. It's barely any gold. Uh, but to some, it's either a lot of gold, or it's gold that they do not have, and uh, weren't really warned that they would want to farm, and uh, they don't have the time to farm it on such a short notice because the item's gone so quickly. So, what is it? Uh, the Doomer, of course, says that this is a cynical attempt to to juice WoW token sales with a brisk FOMO reward. Um, the not Doomer says that this is just a new feature added to Pirate's Day, which has um, always been a time limited event in World of Warcraft, and this will be a part of Pirate's Day um, every Pirate's Day, meaning that it's just a new reward um, that they added this time around. Uh, obviously, though, when it is the next expansion, a dragon riding customization won't be as wanted by people. Anyway, to be honest with you, I think that it's the latter, or at the very least, this is just an oversight and something they didn't really think about. Even though, to many people, the look of, hey, you have two days to cough up 50 grand, uh, to a lot of people, that did look like quite a bad thing. Obviously, 50 grand is not that much gold in World of Warcraft, but uh, if you're pretty much floating around zero and you really need stuff for your raid mats or whatever, um, uh, to a player who's not really familiar with lots of gold-making techniques, it might be tricky to see how they could make that money appear. And for Blizzard, there's an easy learning here. Basically, right, find a Doomer, uh, go onto 4chan or Twitter, anywhere, just find a Doomer, uh, lock them up in your basement, and then give them everything that you plan to do, and uh, see whatever they say. Uh, and that way, you'll never be uh, caught off guard again. Uh, seriously, though, just doing a quick PSA saying, hey, there's a cool new reward. It's going to cost 50,000 gold. Uh, there you go. Doing that even a week before uh, certainly would have uh, removed the Doomer take. I've got some lore, I'll do it pretty quick. A spell called the Great Dragons mentions the current aspects and Viranoth receiving the blessing of a Mirdra seal. Of course, Viramoth uh, being a kind of primal aspect is basically confirmed by this, and if Blizzard wanted a nice visual and an Illum tie-in, they uh, would have this happen during the Embrace, which is a celestial event where Azeroth's two moons, the White Lady and the Blue Child, are in conjunction with each other. And finally, visage forms that have glowing eyes have been found, which basically would be, uh, yeah, undoing the turning off of the light switch that happened with all the dragon's eyes in a pretty cheesy moment after uh, Deathwing kick the bucket in Cataclysm. Now, does this mean that Amir Drasil will uh, return their original Aspectral powers from the Titans, or uh, is this a new type of power they're getting, or um, if Amir Drasil is truly Azeroth, does it like activate the Mother Oathstone? Maybe? Maybe that means the Oathstone actually does something? Um, you know, like maybe channel the power of the Titans to Azeroth or something? I don't know. Oathstones, what do they mean? Next though, let's talk about some gameplay. All right, some immediate gameplay stuff. Hunters, you're finally getting your raid buff back, but it's not exactly the one that many of you will have wanted. Um, most people just wanted something that would get them picked, right? What they got was Hunter's Mark increasing all damage a target takes by 5% while above 80% health, um, but 
it's on the global cooldown, and that means you can't weave it through your rotation seamlessly, which uh, just means it'll be rather annoying. It's also not as good as what a Demon Hunter or a Monk uh, gets, which just leaves many people wondering why True Shot Aura, a raid-wide attack power increase, uh, isn't just added to the game. I imagine Blizzard will say, ah, oh, it doesn't really make that much sense. You know, why is a Hunter giving everyone attack power? At least Hunter's Mark is a bit more flavorful. Maybe that's what they say. I don't know. I haven't talked to them. What do you think, though? I mean, certainly, this doesn't matter too much to me. I'm not going to be lured back to my old main unless there's maybe a revamp because Priest and Paladin are too fun right now. Season 3, it really does represent a lot of change. We're kind of going from win to win with gearing this season because not only is the Revival Catalyst uh, becoming available in week 1 of Season 3, it's now been confirmed that the Season 3 Master uh, Achievement will uh, return as well as the Omni Tokens from Farak. And with all of these things combined, it basically means the players will be able to get their 2 and 3 uh, like pieces in absolutely no time uh, for tier. And it's an interesting thing. Getting that power is exciting, but as a game system, this is more focused on solving a player's need and addressing fairness in a world where social factors to, I suppose, get a raid spot or have a certain level of power in your character exist. So, how do you think then about motivational excitement existing in gearing um, without returning to, you know, Titanforge and craziness, right? This is not me being like rhetorical. I'm, uh, I'm genuinely curious because what happens if you polish out um, all the little bits of roughness? Are you going to be left with a perfect diamond or um, will you be left wanting a little bit more? I wonder, how has gearing made you feel? Next, though, something pretty neat. The item level of all Outdoor World content is being increased with Season 3, essentially making activities from prior content actually matter. This includes things like Researchers Under Fire, Time Rifts, Dream Surges, and much of the 10.0 launch events, uh, like the Grand Hunts and the Siege on Dragonbane Keep. Now, for some reason, the Community Feast is uh, not listed, which is kind of odd. It's actually, right now, after a bunch of changes, vastly more fun than it was at launch. Like, you actually get tasks consistently, you feel like you're actually helping, it's, uh, it's way better. So basically, it's all just going to be more relevant via dropping a better gear. This should significantly reduce one of the feelings that you do get in Season 2, where you kind of log in, you're like, right, I've done the two or three weekly things in the world. It's pleb gear from here on out. I no longer care. Oh dear, why am I on my character? And then somebody logs off. I assume that's what they're trying to solve there. What else then? Well, there's a pretty insane number of cosmetics that have been data mined. Loads of dwarf cosmetics, which is certainly suspicious given Kazalgar. We've got terrarium back pieces, which, um, I don't know, make me feel kind of undergroundy. We've got other stuff though. Dreadlord gear, we've got Scarlet Zealot stuff for 200 tenders, Winter's Veil cosmetics, 10.2 cosmetics, the Glory of the Dream mount, Wildhammer dwarf uh, head gear, um, which is a pretty damn big win actually. Um, also, Crusader Helms demon bikes, because I guess they're pretty metal, why not? Uh, scarab gear, dwarf axes, storm hammers. The data mine stuff from the next expansion is the um, the storm rider, I believe. Um, so I don't know, storm hammers, like, yeah, it's a wild hammer dwarf thing, but uh, you do have to wonder. Anyway, it's a lot, and again, if your lore head was not just tickled a little bit by all of this dwarf stuff, don't worry, mine was too, and we will chat about it tomorrow. PvP then! Yeah, you poor bastards, you're uh, not getting any new content, don't worry about that. Uh, you will have to wait um, probably a calendar year to get solo queue rated battlegrounds um, in, into the game properly, but at least for right now, you are getting the ability to transfer honor points between your characters, albeit with a rather steep tax, and you're also getting the Battlemender title that's been added for winning. 50 solo shuffle matches at or above rival one. Uh, of course, healer supply is one of the issues with solo shuffle queues, making them brutal for DPS players. Um, I don't imagine this will be enough to really uh, make a dent, but um, yeah, I suppose it's cool. And really, that's the lion's share of what's been going on. Of course, since the Algarian Stormrider um, thing happened, we now have a whole fresh wave of leaks on MMO Champion that I think we're all using the, you know, the Towly Underground stuff the Algarian uh, thing. They're just kind of using those to create more and more plausible looking leaks, which is how the cycle will naturally uh, go. Um, and I suppose the long tradition of Blizzard accidentally leaking the next expansion in a small way is continuing. I mean, do you remember when we were looking at the data mining for the Argus patch? And uh, guess what happened? We saw some Kul'Turin uh, stuff. And we're like, hmm, I wonder why we're, why, why is this here? And obviously, 
the next expansion is BFA, which involves Cull Terrasse. And I do bring actually uh, that up for a point, because yes, we have seen something that says Kaz Algar, but uh, one zone is not an expansion. One group of people within an expansion is not the entire expansion. There is still, uh, you know, the vast, vast, vast majority that uh, we do not know. Finally, though, there is one thing that I saw in one leak, which I would like to bring up. Um, and I don't know if this is hopium or whatever, but the leak basically said, we're going to the Voidlands. Now, immediately you might think, oh god, no, not another cosmic plane. I don't want to go to Zareth Umbra to fight the firstest before ones. Um, well, I actually did have a bit of a think, because remember how for the longest time Blizzard said, hey, we can't do the Emerald Dream. I mean, it would just be a big green field for a whole expansion. Well, what if they've kind of thought, hang on a second, right, we do have all of this void stuff and light stuff and everything that we do have to pay off, and uh, there technically might be a reason to go to the void lands, but oh dear, I don't think that would be a good, uh, you know, entire expansion, maybe we couldn't do it right. Well, the, the, the leak, you know, leak, the story that somebody made up, in all likelihood, uh, says that the Voidlands will actually be a sort of final patch, a little bit like Argus, so like a really big major content patch. And if that was the case, and that is how we dealt with the big cosmic thing, it's just, you know, a patch and not the whole expansion, that could be a lot more tolerable. So I don't know, what do you think about that one? Anyway, that's it for me. That's it for the news. There will be a video diving deep into the new expansion stuff and all of the things that could tie into it tomorrow. So uh, yeah, I'll see you then. Goodbye.